All right, so we should be live. Let's see if we, we can actually be seen by our friends in the uh, in the IRC channel. So if you can see us, my friends, do let us know. Anyone who's done this before will know the drill. Let me just double check. I wish there was some way in which Google could somehow let us know that we are actually streaming to the internet or whether I'm just talking to myself right now. Let's see. So according to my browser, we are live, but let's just check. Uh, so the view account is starting to climb up. DS Maguire seems to assure us that we're live, but do we believe DS Maguire? Simon K, Kama Celtic or Celtic. All right. So I'm just going to give it one minute for everything to climb up. Loud and clear. Not necessarily making any sense, but loud and clear. Um, okay, let's get started. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the Ubuntu Weekly Update. Uh, my name is John O'Bacon. I work as the Ubuntu Community Manager. And uh, the goal of this session, as those of you who have been here before, is to provide a, a summary of much of the work that's been going on across various aspects of the Ubuntu ecosystem. Uh, so today we have... Uh, um, a, a handsome and um, spirited group of individuals. Um, on the left, we've got Daniel Holbach, who's going to be providing us with some updates about the app upload process. Um, George Castro, next to him, is going to be providing an update about uh, Juju Core and Ecosystem. Michael Hall is going to be providing an update about uh, the Core Apps program and uh, the fantastic work to build the, the set of core applications that are going to be available on the phone. Uh, Pat McGowan is going to be providing an update about, this week he's going to be talking about both Mir and uh, Ubuntu Touch as well. Uh, Thomas Strell is going to be talking about the Unity system components, uh, and I'm going to be providing an update about the community. Um, and my apologies that my lower third, the little orange bar, isn't working, but it turns out that if you, if you use Google Hangouts in Chromium, which is a Google browser, the lower third doesn't work. Thank you, Google. Thanks again. So why don't we kick off with Daniel, and Daniel's going to give us an update about uh, click packages and the app upload process. Hello, hello. Um, I also have an update about the Ubuntu system settings, um, because today I'm joined by, hang on, by Sebastian Bachet, hey. but he told me that he's too busy to actually read it out, so I'm going to do this. <laughs> Lazy. Yes. That's right. So, uh, last week in Ubuntu system settings, this happened. The settings infrastructure uh, saw some refactoring of the installation directories for multi-arch and external panel support. The uh, background settings, they had some uh, tweaks done to better match the design. The battery settings added the new panel UI and some work was started on the back end to make uh, the suspend configuration work for both PowerD and GNOME settings daemon, and that also makes it easier to test it on the desktop. In the keyboard settings, the main screen was dropped. It's part of the language settings now, and the online accounts used a new library uh, used by applications to invoke the online accounts panel in order to request the creation of accounts by provider or by service type. And now I'm going to uh, quickly run through what happened in the Click and App Store world. In terms of planning, we're soon going to open up the App Store in alpha stage. So there was some planning uh, done to, to, to make this work smoothly. Um, we also had a long discussion about how the review process is going to work, who's going to work on this, which parts we're going to automate at, at which stage. And I'll just summarize this on the Ubuntu App Store developers list for anyone who's interested. And also, we moved a lot of the planning docs to the uh, Ubuntu wiki. So if you're interested, there's the wiki.ubuntu.com slash app store page. And from there, you can find, find out what the goals are, what's going to happen next, uh, what was decided where, and, uh, and potentially even get involved. On the server end, we had a lot of um, deployments to production. This is all done to prepare us for uh, the opening of the uh, the App Store. And also, a really nice touch was that it's now much, much easier to upload uh, new new 
packages. In the past, you would have to fill out the same form again, which was a pain, so uh, that's going to be much, much easier now. And also, lots and lots of bug fixes. On the client side, we have loads of great news, because the Clip App Scope um, preview has finally landed. Thanks a lot to Thomas Strehl and, and team. Uh, this was, was quite a bit of work, but it's finally landed. Um, we discovered some issues in the download manager, so that's going to be worked on. And together with some fixes on, on, um, in server production, this should be working on the images, on the Ubuntu Touch images in just some days. What's going to happen next on the client end is the uninstall and upgrade experience, and this should ha be happening much, much quicker now as the code and the UI are, are finally in place. On the security end, um, there's going to be better support for translatable uh, XDG uh, user directories. So there was some work done there. The security team also went around and knocked on people's doors, tried to get, um, tried to find out which paths are used in apps so they can uh, be supported better in, in uh, application confinement. Click is in main now and click App Armor, which provides the hooks and uh, the, uh, the App Armor profile generation is undergoing a main inclusion review right now. There were a number of talks uh, surrounding helpers and trusted helpers to try to get all the teams to, to plan accordingly. Um, there was some, a review of Ubuntu's use of Binder, which is still used on the, uh, in the Ubuntu Touch world, and how that affects App Armor mediation. And uh, the team also filed various bugs against all kinds of packages to work better with application confinement. What's coming up in terms of security is um, the Dbus and App Armor mediation is going to be in Saucy very soon, which is which is great. And the team also ho hopes to finish the XDG user directories work this week, and then work on the app review security um, afterwards. All right, thank you, Daniel. Next up is George Castro, who's going to provide us an update on core and ecosystem in Juju. Hi, how's everyone doing today? So I'm fresh back from a sprint that we did um, on the Isle of Man, so there's been a lot of activity around not just Juju, but Ubuntu server in general. Um, the first thing I want to cover is the work we're doing around continuous integration. So the idea there being that um, a set of charms will allow you to do continuous integration um, of your code in the cloud live as you speak. If you don't know what continuous integration is, the idea there is that a charm will watch a hook in your version control, and that's GitHub or whatever it is, and every time you do an upstream, upstream commit, it updates the entire deployment live on the cloud. So as you can see, we're really excited about this because it allows people to just grab their trunk, get it up and spinning, and while you update and fix it and stuff, your deployment will carry along with you with, with minimal friction. So we're pretty excited about that. Um, there's more work on getting network addresses for containers. So in Juju, um, we want to make it so that when you launch things into a cloud, whether that's HP or Amazon and whatnot, we want those to be in LXC containers. Um, for obvious reasons, it lets us put multiple charms on one instance, which saves you a lot of money, um, but also to, to keep the services nice and clean and separated. Uh, the problem with just putting containers everywhere is that um, you have a lot of networking concerns, right? So assuming you have a server with four network cards in it, um, you have your external networks you have to care about, and you have to care about the networks in between the instances themselves, so that's not really straightforward. Um, so right now, Maz does what we call a flat network and getting this to work on OpenStack and AWS, or AWS is going to present a few challenges. So uh, more, more work going there. Really, the only thing left on getting us full container integration with Juju is uh, mostly networking at this point. Um, the API security work is moving forward pretty quickly now uh, for, the, for Juju's API itself. And this past week, new experimental support for debug hooks landed. So what this allows you to do is to do Juju deploy your charm that you're working on, you can type Juju debug hooks, and we'll show you what's actually happening um, live with log aggregation between multiple instances. It makes debugging charms uh, much easier. 
so that's a feature we've been looking forward to for landing for quite some time now. Um, the Juju GUI itself is getting what we're called an, uh, inspectors. So what that is is currently in the Juju GUI, if you click a box, it kind of show you things you can do. Um, <laughs> but they're not very interesting, so the inspector will actually show you what's going on on the instance. It'll show you a little red, green, yellow status of all the instances, which one's launched, which one's failed, um, and that's, that's going to be pretty cool uh, when that lands. So I'm purposely being vague there. Um, manually, manual provisioning of servers um, is now in progress. What this allows you to do is to launch Juju to manage uh, any machine that has an SSH server on it. Uh, this is important because we have a lot of people with like Linodes or maybe use DigitalOcean and currently Juju only supports uh, what we call real clouds with, that have object storage and all that sorts of thing. So we're working on making Juju really easy to use for people who might have a few boxes laying around um, or don't have an actual cloud. Um, so that's, that's pretty cool. Look for that landing sometime uh, before the fall. Last week was bug week since um, a lot of people were gone at the sprint, so the team just went around and cleaned up a bunch of bugs. We've cleaned up a lot of really um, dumb paper cut bugs where if you do something Juju doesn't expect, it gives you a really cryptic error. So now we're telling you things like, hey, you didn't bootstrap an environment and uh, making things kind of easy. Um, in accordance with that, we're going to start focusing on the what we call the first 30 minutes of Juju exposure. Um, Whereas uh, we want to get people up and running as, as quickly as possible, and some people are having a hard time getting that to happen. So we're going to work on, on going step by step through the docs um, and may just make it easier for people to be able to run Juju uh, wherever they want. The Rack slash Rails charm is finishing up uh, and is in, actually in the charm store now. I'll be blogging about uh, this over the course of next week. Basically, simply speaking, um, we now enable it for anybody who's a Rails developer to get their stuff up and running on almost any database into a cloud in about six minutes. It's pretty sweet. Um, so keep an eye out for those blog posts there. Uh, after that, we're going to start uh, looking at the Node.js terms, and we're partnering together with Joyent, which are, uh, you might know them from Smart Cloud and from their Node.js work. So we're really looking forward to working with them to making a first class Node experience on Ubuntu. The idea is be, before 14.04, if you're developing a Node.js application, Ubuntu will be like the easiest and fastest way to get up and running. So really excited there. Um, that and the only thing left is that we are now halfway through the Charm Championship. We are giving away over $30,000 in prizes, uh, $10,000 in each category. Um, so if you go to github.com slash juju slash charm dash championship, you can read up all the rules. And what we're trying to do is get people to charm up their infrastructure that you might use for a startup or for your application or things like that. Um, we want you to share that with the community, and you share it with the community, you have the opportunity to win 10 grand. Um, so it's really cool. We're about halfway through. We've got judges um, uh, from Netflix and a whole bunch of internal judges. We've got Eric Hammond uh, is going to be a judge, and we've got a lot of cloud luminaries uh, just today. The guy who started the monitoring sucks movement, if, if you're into DevOps, um, has agreed to do it to be a judge. So we've got a lot of celebrity judges that want to look at your stuff and have an opportunity to win money. So other than any questions, that's all I've got, Jonah. All right. Thanks, George. And, yeah, I just want to reiterate as well, like the charm... The, the Charm Championship as well. Like there's money up on the table and um, a lot of opportunity there. Like we're only halfway through, so there's there's all to play for. So get get, get involved. Next up is uh, the man, the legend, Michael Hall, uh, who's going to give us an update on the Core Apps program. Uh, Mike, I think we've got a lot of new people here. So do you want to just give a quick one minute summary of what Core Apps is and then provide the update? Okay. So when we launched the uh phone SDK and the initial phone uh, operating system. We put out a call for interested developers who wanted to get involved to help us build the set of applications that would ship with our Ubuntu Touch devices. And we had an initial set of 12, and we added some and removed a couple. I think we're at 12 again now. But uh, these are apps that are developed by community developers. Uh, the projects are being kind of overseen by myself and Alan Pope and David Ponella. Um, helping set the direction for the projects and unblock any problems they have and 
coordinate with the rest of uh, the canonical teams and the community developers. We've also been getting design input from the canonical design team to help uh, set the visual look and feel of these apps. So over the past few months, we've gone from nothing to 12 almost final apps. Uh, and that's what I'll be going over today. So one of the big things that we've had over the past couple weeks uh, after the client sprint that was a couple of weeks ago is uh, plans to unblock a lot of features that we've been waiting on for some of these core apps. Uh, we'll be getting an alarm API by the end of this month, which will enable us to uh, get the clock working to set alarms and trigger them to wake you up in the morning or whatever else you're using them for. And we should also be able to use that to give event reminder notifications from the calendar. We've got a music scanner service that will be coming online sometime in the next couple weeks. That will provide a central place for music and video metadata. Uh, that will be specifically interesting to the music app, which currently is doing its own scanning that kind of takes a while. So that will be coming online, and we'll also be getting a media player service, which will let you continue playing music in the background, even if the app doesn't have focus. And you'll be able to queue up multiple songs or a playlist or anything else, and it'll keep going, even if you don't have the app in focus. We'll be getting an Evolution Data Server backend for the Qt Organizer API for saving calendar events. Uh, I think it'll also be saving contact events. And that should let us sync with things like the Google Calendar so that the calendar will become more useful. We're getting an app lifecycle uh, framework put in place so that your app can be notified on different lifecycle events, most importantly being shut down, uh, so it can do any kind of cleanup or anything that it needs to do. And we're getting a platform services API, which will let us open URLs in a different app. So if you're in, say, the file manager and you click on a PDF file, it'll be able to open it up in the document viewer app. Or if you click on a URL in the RSS reader, it'll open it up in the web browser, that kind of thing. And these should all be available by the end of August. Uh, we've gotten some visual designs and updates to visual designs for some of the apps. Uh, we got some minor updates to the clock app uh, on the timer and the alarm screens. Um, we got some, we're going to be getting in visual designs for the calendar app, which will finally unblock some of that work and get the calendar app looking more like the other core apps with a, a nice visual gradient. And we've also got some changes coming to the weather app that we should be getting relatively soon to finalize the visual designs for that. For app updates, the RSS reader has a new grid view that... Uh, works a lot better and includes images from the articles to, to give a nice visual design for it. Uh, they've re-enabled the ability to add, edit, and remove feeds and also the ability to manage topics that those feeds go into. So it makes it much easier to organize uh, your list of feeds. The document viewer has added PDF support and they did that by working with Upstream Poplar to get the latest version packaged and get a QML plugin written for it. The weather app has added uh, some more information to each of the day's forecasts. So if you tap on it, it'll flip it around and it'll give you information about wind speed and humidity and that kind of thing. They've also expanded the uh, daily forecast. So instead of just a small line with a little bit of data, you get a full set of data for each day in the forecast. The file manager has added uh, place, places bookmarks, just like you have in Nautilus. So you can easily jump to documents, pictures, music folder, that kind of thing. And they've also added settings for how to sort, whether or not to show hidden files, etc. The calendar app has re-enabled the ability to save events, which makes it infinitely more useful again. Um, they've added a time selection component for setting the, the start and end times for the events. And they've also added a year and week view pages according to some of the initial designs that we've gotten for that app. Um, Daniel mentioned uh, the click apps work that's been going on. We're going to be converting all of the core apps to click packages. So instead of dev packages, we'll be using click for installing all of those. 
which is going to cause some issues because we have some plugin dependencies for some of them that we're either going to have to roll into the click package itself or get into the universe and main repositories for Ubuntu. And uh, speaking of click packaging, they've added a plugin to Qt Creator that makes it really simple. It's got one small form, you add some metadata about your app and click a button and it generates a click package for you automatically. It's much, much simpler than trying to build a dev package for it was. Other than that, uh, we've been continuing to expand our autopilot coverage across all of the core apps and make sure that those tests are passing and being run automatically whenever a new commit is made to the core apps branch. And we still need more app developers to get involved. Some of uh, our developers have had to move on to other things. You know, life gets in the way sometimes. So if you are an app developer and you're interested in helping out with the core apps project, just get in touch with me, mhall119 on IRC or mhall119 at ubuntu.com. And that's it for me. Thank you, Mike. All right, next up we've got Pat McGowan, who's going to give us an update uh, not only about Ubuntu Touch this week, but also about Mir in the absence of uh, Kevin. Yeah, thanks, John. Uh, so um, first off, there's, there's been a, a real uptick in some porting activity uh, oh. using the, the latest images. Can you hear me OK? Um, so, so we'd like to see that uh, additional activity for all the Yeah, we can now. Yes. Um, Fablet, the Fablet Flash tool was updated uh, to add support for loading community images. So now um, we've unified. Everybody can use the same tool and the same approach. So that's good. Um, a lot of talk about quick packages. There's a bunch uh, that have entered the build for the, the applications. And there's also work being done in the test infrastructure in Jenkins to properly support that. So all that's coming together uh, at the same time. We've also moved almost everything from PPAs into the archive proper. So there's very few things left in the PPA that are just waiting for a few dependencies to clear. Okay, and I guess the four apps will probably be the last ones to, to be brought in. Um, we've, been, we've been getting, you know, I, we mentioned last week that we've been using the dashboard to gate the image um, publishing. Uh, we've had better success lately with some consistency in getting those uh, everything green, so more images are flowing through in a timely way. But that's good to see that we've got the baseline established there. Um, now, quick, quickly on uh, Mir and Unity 8, I think the big news there is that um, it's it's reaching parity uh, with with the current implementation. So uh, everything's working on getting landed this week, and the the approach we're going to take is to have a test image we'd like people to bang on as an option next week. So the Flash tool will offer an option to do that easily. Um, and people can go to the alternate image and get some feedback on that. And once that looks um, like everybody's satisfied, then it becomes the default. Um, there's also some work the, the developers are um, helping some of those Ubuntu folks with um, an evaluation of, of here. So there's been some bugs being reported as a result of that. As far as the other applications go, um, the browser recently uh, put previews in for tabs and bookmarks. And um, right now, we're working on an updated user agent string in an override list. We had a nice, uh, got some nice support from some of the Mozilla guys who've been through this before and are quite expert with it. So trying to take a similar approach uh, to what we can So we have a very simple user adjustment and a site-based override list where we needed to, to make things work properly. Um, as far as the phone apps, you'll see that the contacts app got into the build. And the dialer and messaging app are being clickified right now, so they'll enter the build uh, sometime soon, hopefully this week. We're also working on components for uh, sharing and content importing. So similarly, you'll see those things that are very short. Um, let's see. Well, to wrap up, I just wanted to talk about um, the goals for August. Um, people can see that uh, the whole team, the extended team, is quite busy. We're trying to focus on the foundational aspects of the build for this month so that we can kind of enter September with a strong base and an ability to add uh, more features on a priority basis. 
So just to summarize, we talked about it last week, but getting Unity and Mirror in, uh, getting the image-based update stuff active in, in uh, the default way to update the images. Um, won't have to have the flash anymore. Uh, getting all the click packages stuff landed, as Daniel described. Getting all the indicators in and working. And then the important app lifecycle stuff that uh, Michael was referring to, along with all the back end services. So all that stuff is you know being worked on at the same time. Hopefully we're in this month. And um, once we do that, we're we're not necessarily going to have a full freeze for the touch image. We're going to you know keep working. There's some freeze exceptions in, but we will have some stability as we move toward the uh, official ones. And that's my summary. Brilliant. Thank you, Pat. All right, next up is Thomas Stroll, who's going to give us an update about the uh, Unity system. Thanks, Jono. So let's start out with the scopes. So the first thing there to report is that uh, the media scanner is really about to land now. So everything is packaged up, it's reviewed, it's tested, and we have filed uh, merge proposals and everything. So they, it should actually land today or tomorrow. And with that, we also open up, obviously, the, the project in Launchpad, uh, which should then also enable everybody to look at the source code, to contribute, etc. And especially that will also hopefully unblock now the, the music app team, which should also use the media scanner as a back end to actually figure out which music is actually located on the device. Uh, based on that, uh, we have also started work on the uh, music and video scope, which will also utilize the media scanner as a backend. That is coming along nicely, but obviously first we have to land the media scanner. Um, there are two smaller issues left with the media scanner, uh, which we're currently fixing. That's one is that when you basically mount uh, removable devices or, or drives, then uh, the, the code there has some issues around UDEF. So we are trying to introduce some alternatives to work around that. And then we also figure out a race condition uh, which seems to originate somewhere in Chile, which we need to tackle to really get it fully working. Um, otherwise, on the scope side, we have implemented the uh, running scopes, uh, sorry, running app scope, uh, which basically tells you on the phone which applications are currently running. Uh, we had that mocked up and faked before, but now it's the real implementation using basically the real backends from, uh, from Unity 8. Uh, and mirror and everything. So that uh, seems, or that is coming along nicely as well. Switching over to the indicators, uh, a lot of work is happening in the in the background and on back ends. Um, that also means like currently you don't see a lot of progress on the front end side. So what we have basically, most of the indicator back ends are ready by now, or at least uh, ready to a degree, which uh, allows us to move it to the phone and not really causing that many regressions. Uh, the big blocker there still is the, the making it visible, meaning the architecture, what we have on the backend side requires some kind of uh, G menu models to be moved over the dbus and then uh, being reinterpreted as some other kind of uh, what we call the Ubuntu menu model or Unity menu model to then be displayed and auto-generating a UI in the panel. And uh, that kind of enabler is uh, mostly ready. So on the on the one hand side, from the back end side, this has landed yesterday. And uh, the Unity 8 side is currently under review and hopefully landed tomorrow. And that means like if that is in tomorrow or the day after, then we will start step by step bringing the new indicator backends to the device. And as we bring it on the device, since we auto-generate more or less the UI, uh, that means, like, you know, once we have one indicator back end there, we should also immediately see a working front end. So the plan is to have that uh, over the next couple of days, and until Thursday, Friday, we should have uh, at least, like, three or four real indicators being visible on the device if nothing unforeseen happens in between. So that is the plan. That goes on then beginning of next week, obviously. But then the big focus for next week then is uh, increasing the test coverage. Uh, we are quite weak on some of the indicators still. And then uh, helping basically Sebastian and the other guys from settings to uh, provide uh, network settings, etc., to the settings application on the phone. So that's happening next week then. 
On the launcher, um, small progress is happening. I mean, it's not a really big project. So we can now deal uh, with click packages, getting the information displayed on the on the launcher, etc., or at least exposing it via the back end. Uh, we introduced a new desktop file parser. And uh, now what's up to do still is uh, fixing some smaller issues in the icon loading, where we still have some issues. And uh, then um, basically adding the same functionality as we, as I explained for the scopes, that is detecting the recent applications to also show those probably in the launcher. All that will also happen next week, uh, and, and that looks more than doable. That is the update from the Unity backends. Thank you, Thomas. All right, I'm going to finish up, and then we'll get into some questions. <clears throat> so on the community side, um, um, uh, I've been uh, traveling for the last uh, two or three weeks. Um, I went out to OSCON, um, and then we had a sprint in um, the Isle of Man. <clears throat> and then uh, the week, this last weekend, it was at the, uh, the XDA DevCon conference. Um, and then last night, it was at the Mobile Monday Silicon Valley event. Um, and the good news about about all of this is that throughout all of these events, the the amount of interest in Ubuntu um, converged across these devices was just absolutely phenomenal. I mean, there was there was just an uh, just an absolutely huge amount of interest. Um, um, we at OSCON, the booth was packed from from beginning to end. People wanting to see demos, people wanting to see how things are working. Um, there was a packed audience last night at the uh, Mobile Monday, at the X XDA event. Mike and I were there, and we probably must have spoken to pretty much every attendee of the event. A lot of interest in Ubuntu. So the good news is that um, uh, pretty much all of the events that we're going to, uh, people are really passionate about what's going on with Ubuntu on phones and across all these other devices. Uh, the other thing is that um, at OSCON, the OSCON we, we announced the Indiegogo campaign, which is the campaign to build uh, the Ubuntu Edge, um, and as many of you will will have seen, that the the campaign has already broken some records. It's uh, it was the fastest, uh, it's the highest highest funded campaign ever on Indiegogo. It was the fastest to two million, um, and the next the next campaign the next uh, record that we want to break is to get over ten point two million, uh, which will make it the highest funded uh, thirty day um, campaign um, in history. So we're currently at nine point eight. Million, so we've not got far to go. We've got nine days to go, so I'd encourage everybody to go to indiegogo.com/project/ubuntu-edge to go and to go and support the campaign. Um, so some some work has been going on with Mir. Pat already talked about Mir, but uh, and Mir has landed in the archive. Um, uh, we've also been um, we've also seen the Ubuntu uh, team. Uh, Ubuntu is a, a flavor that ships XFCE. Uh, they've been doing some testing with with Xmir. They originally shipped uh, 0.0.8, uh, 0 .8, and then they they shipped another ISO, which has got an updated version of of, of Xmir. Um, overall, it seems like the, the 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 feedback from that has been generally pretty positive. But the the testing is continuing, and what we've done is we've taken the bugs that uh, that those those folks have seen, and we've tagged them with um, flavor Mir bug. And the Mir team are aware of these bugs that provided updates, and they're and they're, and they're fixing them. Um, the Mythbuntu team are also looking into doing some similar testing as well. And obviously, there's just a wider set of testing that's happening with with Mir and Xmir in the archive. So, for example, I'm running um, I'm running Xmir. Everything works great for me. Um, would encourage you to do the same thing. So, we're going to kick off a, a more formal call for testing uh, this week around Mir. And then when we land the the, um, the multi monitor support later in the month, there'll also be another call for testing for people in the, in the community to participate with. Um, the other thing as well it, that we kicked off. Um, so at OSCON, we we announced the the Indiegogo campaign on the Monday, and then on the Wednesday we announced the um, the the beta of the Ubuntu SDK. And the Ubuntu SDK provides uh, functionality for building a native app with QML. Um, for creating HTML5 apps with with HTML5 and Cordova, uh, building scopes, uh, and you can also use the SDK for, for OpenGL apps as well. Um, we announced that on the on the Wednesday, and then the following week uh, we kicked off the Ubuntu App Showdown, and this is basically a competition where everybody's got six weeks to build an application from scratch. Um, so we have we have three prizes available. This is there's there's ne uh, a Nexus Four. Uh, three Nexus 4s, um, 
which the winner will get uh, Ubuntu Touch pre-installed with their application. Uh, and then, so two of those Nexus 4s are for applications from scratch, and then the third one is for applications ported from another platform. Uh, so we kicked that off about a week ago, and we've already seen just a tremendous amount of interest. We've seen about, there's about 20 applications that we've seen uh, are, are in development. I just want to read a, a bunch of these out. Uh, apps including Ubuntu Tasks, an OMG Ubuntu Reader, uh, C Notes, Memories, Connect4, Card Games, uh, Rad.io, Client, TV Stalker, Money List, which is a financial planning tool, Image Editing App, Ubuntu IRC, Mo Movie Database, Simple Game, Fallback Messenger, 3D Edge, which is a 3D OpenGL model of the Ubuntu Edge, which is quite neat, uh, another RSS Reader, Graphite Drawing, uh, London Travel App, and Demolition Port, which is a dem a port of the um, the uh, Box 2D um, demolition demo that's part of the of that distribution. So, lots of great work going on. I'd encourage everybody to go to um, reddit.com/r/ubuntu-app-showdown, which is where we're encouraging people to, to to send their apps. People get points for the more you blog and talk about what's going on. So, we'd like to encourage everybody to come and join the campaign. Lots of applications uh, being developed. And of course, you know all of these apps will be available as part of the uh, as part of the um, um, software center on, on on the phone. So be sure to get get involved in the contest. Um, the other thing I just wanted to talk about briefly was some great work that's been going on with Ricardo and Sergio on Pat's team, as well as Daniel Holbach, which is um, so. When we kicked off um, Ubuntu for phones, uh, we saw uh, many people in the XDA community were porting. Um, Ubuntu Touch to different devices. We formally target Galaxy Nexus and Nexus 4. Those are the devices that our developers are already testing on. Um, but there's no reason why Ubuntu Touch can't work on a wide range of devices. So this is when our relationship with XDA was kicking off. As I mentioned, we sponsored the XDA DevCon conference in Miami this weekend, and it was just a wonderful event. They did a fantastic job. Uh, and we've got a really fantastic relationship with XDA. Daniel's been doing some work where you know, summarize, uh, bring in all the questions in from XDA and asking our engineers and engineering managers to answer them. Um, so there's lots of great work going on, lots of porting happening. happening. Um, but the, one of the challenges that we had was taking all this great work that's going on in XDA with these ports and being able to deliver them to users. With the Galaxy Nexus and the Nexus 4 work, it's as simple as, as running Fablet Flash, which is the tool that we use. It will download an image and it will put it onto a device. So Ricardo and Sergio and Daniel have been working together to be able to modify Fablet Flash so we can pull in this work from XDA. So we've already started seeing some great work from that coming in. Um, we, we promoted that at the event. There was a lot of interest, a lot of interest in porting Ubuntu Touch to multiple devices. So, um, you know, great work to those guys for doing that. Um, Michael already provided really an update in Core Apps, but I just wanted to finish up with this. We had a goal at the end of June to, uh, to have the core apps to be uh, dog foodable, um, uh, which is where they can be used on a daily basis. Uh, we've seen most of the applications are pretty much in that state right now. Uh, as Mike mentioned, you know, the goal is to basically unblock the core apps at the platform level so you can set alarms and music and play and things like that. That work is going on ready for the end of August. Um, but one of the key areas that we've been focused on, on is the continuous integration. This is whereby an, uh, an image of Ubuntu Touch for phones will not be released until all of the text pass in, 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 the, in the QA dashboard. Um, so Nicholas Skaggs has been doing, a great work, a great, been doing some great work there uh, in conjunction with Alexander Sack and some other folks to be able to get those tests in, in, um, integrated into the, into the continuous integration workflow so that when they pass, um, we're, all, we're all set to go and we can cut a new image. So currently, uh, some of the core apps are failing right now, but we're hoping to have those fixed in the next couple of days. Um, but that will mean that not only is great work going on to, to continue to grow those core, core apps, but also you can be assured that they will continue to work in a reliable manner on their daily images. So <clears throat> that pretty much summarizes the community side of things. I'm still catching up after being on the road for about two and a half weeks. Uh, but things are looking really good. I'm really excited about the progress that we're making. Going out to these events was just hugely motivating and just seeing the excitement that's going, that's, that's surrounding Ubuntu. Um, so, yeah, good stuff. So I guess what we'll do is we'll spin on now to, um, to some questions. Um, um, if anybody's got any questions, we've got about 20 minutes left. Uh, you can ask questions to anybody on the team. Um, just type in the word question in capital letters. 
uh, and then your question into the IRC channel, and then we're going to go through them one by one. Um, I'll go I'll go through each question, I'll, and I'll I'll pick out somebody who's probably going to be the most appropriate uh, person to to answer that. Um, so if you could get your questions in, um, just while I know there's a bit of a lag on the feed, so just while you get your questions in, I just want to provide a quick update. Uh, one of the questions that someone has asked, asked here from Joe B is, what about me with proprietary drivers? Um, <clears throat> so um, there has been a, 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 a really active set of discussions going on right now with um, each of the GPU manufacturers. Um, um, you know, we're talking to NVIDIA, we're talking to AMD, ATI, and we're talking to Intel as well. Um, unfortunately, for you folks, um, all of those discussions are under NDA. So you know, this is business to business discussions, and we can't we can't really divulge as a matter of professionalism. We can't divulge the result of those you know the, the details in those discussions. What I can tell you is that the discussions are active, they're ongoing, and they're productive. So there's lots of good work going on in in in, in keeping those communication channels flowing. Um, I can't give you any details about the specifics of of, of those discussions. Uh, but we're hoping that we can have more information about that soon. Um, so yeah, that's basically the most I can tell you right now. Um, but rest assured, um, rest assured, um, a lot, a lot of, a lot is going on. Um, all right. So uh, first question is from uh, B A seven A seven C H Y seven G. I don't know how you pronounce that. Um, and I guess I can probably take this one actually, which is, will I be able to use Steam on the Ubuntu phone? Um, it's a good question. We've um, Canonical has a very, very good relationship with Valve, uh, and we've had this relationship for a long time since uh, Valve reached out to us about bringing Steam to Ubuntu. Um, we have been in discussions with Valve about various aspects about how Steam fits into our convergent platform. Um, again, I can't really talk about the details. Uh, Specifics around that because again they're they're business to business relationships. Um, what I can tell you is that is that Steam are interested in continuing to support Ubuntu as a platform, but the you know whether that whether they whether they you know they they're obviously focusing on supporting Ubuntu on the desktop, whether they want to um, uh, support the converged devices Ubuntu on phones and tablets and everything else, is a big set of questions that I think Valve is still evalu evaluating themselves because you know. Bringing games that were designed for desktops to work on phones is, while technically not that difficult, uh, it's just primarily just GL. Um, there's a set of support issues and customer issues and um, some integration issues that they need to figure out. And um, currently, I think Valve is still evaluating that themselves internally. DS McGuire, why doesn't the Ubuntu Touch uh, use already developed and maintained web browsers? So this is probably a question for Pat. Why doesn't the Ubuntu Touch use an already developed and maintained web browser? There are already great web browsers such as Opera Mobile, which are already written in Qt, I believe. Uh, using this would mean more focus uh, that could be put in, in some other areas. So what do you think about that, Pat? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, we, we did evaluate some of the other choices. Um, we, we definitely will wrap and continue to, um, to do so, wrap existing um, WebKit-based solutions. We're currently, you know, right now we use Qt WebKit with our own UI around it. We're also looking at uh, and evaluating the content API uh, for Chromium, which would then get us a lot more functionality, very little work. And then we can still provide our own user experience and tight integration for things like web apps. So that might be the best of both possible worlds. But I, I would like, we'd like to see other browser solutions available on the Touch platform for sure. But I think for our, our base browser, we're going to do the UI ourselves. But then take advantage of something like the content. I do have to say, I love the activity view that we have on our browser. It makes it really easy to go back and see pages you've been to recently, complete with thumbnail. Yeah. All right. Um, question from Rick Spencer. <laughs> Uh, why does uh, George have a picture of Fabio for his avatar? I've got much bigger arms than Fabio was my response. <laughs> All I've got. Okay. Uh, let's let's quietly step over that moment. Um, Camo Celtic, can George and the hangout can George end the hangout oh. with a song? Those All are right. 
I can't even play those. Are they decorative? <laughs> yes, they're not even in tune. Uh, the seven and seven G. Uh, will the Ubuntu phone use an ARM CPU? So this is probably for Pat as well. Uh, you know, I don't think you, if they're talking about Ubuntu Edge, um, I don't think the final part selection has been made. Uh, the, the, a number of likely choices are, are ARM-based uh, processors, some nice new quad cores or whatever. Uh, but I think we'd be open if, you know, if Intel wanted us to use one of their nice new low-power mobile devices, we could have that discussion as well. I don't think the selection's been made yet. All right. You get your questions in, folks. We're out of questions right now. There were actually some questions earlier in the IRC, John. Oh, there were? Let me just pick up. Let me see. Uh, Here's one. He asked earlier, does Canonical have any OEM or business relationship with Dell? Yes. <laughs> we have a very close relationship with Dell. Um, Ubuntu's been shipping on Dell laptops for a long time. Uh, we have an active access set of discussions with Dell on a monthly basis, so yes. <laughs> um, I think that's all of the questions from earlier. Okay. There was one from Areno72. Is there any new info about Mir and proprietary graphics drivers from NVIDIA AMD? I've already answered that. Okay. Yeah, we've covered that already. Uh, okay, we have a question from Samir. Um, and this is, so, is it possible to make a phone ROM that installs on all devices and then you can find and install drivers from manufacturers source for camera, GPU, and so on? Like installing in US on a, on a PC. So Daniel, this is this kind of fits. This question fits in with the uh, with the uh, XDA work. Do you want to just provide an answer to that? Yes. Uh, so it's not quite possible to um, to just use the the same image for for all the devices. It's primarily because you uh, you have different kernels involved for different chipsets. Still, you have um, different devices involved, sometimes you have different, you have to have different tweaks for different devices as well. But um, if you go to wiki.ubuntu.com slash porting, um, you have a, you have the, the porting guide and that should help you um, get a, a port set up and there's also the folks on the Ubuntu dash phone or is it the Ubuntu touch uh, IRC channel and we're, we're happy to help. Yeah, I I'd add to that. I, I think the um, what's in the Android images now is very much just the hardware layer. So as you said, the kernel and drivers, and, and a couple of services, and um, a number of services will no longer be used in the near future by certain swinger lobby. So the um, the scope of what's provided in the Android side really is pretty specific. Device. All right. Next question is from uh, Alex ML. How many apps are in the app showdown? There's about I think there's just over 20 apps um, currently currently being developed. Um, so you know, I, we we'd really encourage you know everybody to get involved and, and participate. You've got the ability to win not only a Nexus 4, which is a pretty nice phone with Ubuntu Touch pre-installed and your app pre-installed. But you also get to win the opportunity to have a conversation with uh, Pat's team to potentially get that that your application into the default phone image that will go out to millions of potential customers. So, you know, if you if you write an application that's high quality and we can bring it into the default image, uh, then potentially you can have millions of Ubuntu users um, uh, using your application as well. So, it's not just winning the the the, the Nexus Four. You will get the Nexus Four. That'll be no problem. Um, but there is it's winning that opportunity for your work to be consumed by by millions of uh, Ubuntu phone users. So be sure to go and get involved. Developer.ubuntu.com slash showdown is all the information is is, is right there. Um, <clears throat> next question is from Camo Celtic. Um, to everyone in the hangout, so apparently we all have to answer this. Do you have a partition for other operating systems on your personal computers? So Daniel? I have to admit, there's this uh, 
text software. I use it once a year. I just put it into Windows, and then I have to spend, I don't know, five hours installing updates, then get my texts done, and then put right back into Ubuntu for another year. That's it. George? I've got one Windows machine out of seven computers, mostly to sync my Fitbit and just to keep a Windows machine around just in case. Everything else is Ubuntu. It's a no for me. I haven't had uh, dual boot in several years now. If I want to try out a new uh, distro or something, I just use their live image on a USB stick. Yeah. It's a no for me, too. I don't have another partition. Thomas? I do have dual boot, actually, for some stuff. Windows still required, taxes, etc. Welcome to Germany. <laughs> Uh, I don't dual boot on my laptop. I have Ubuntu all the way, but I do have a Windows machine that I use for sound engineering. Um, although I think I'm going to switch to Ardo because it's pretty neat. All right, next question um, is from Simon K. Will I be able to use SDL2 to make an Ubuntu phone app? Will I have to include SDL2.so into my click package? Um, you want to take that part? Yes. Oh, sorry. Or Daniel, or yeah. anyone. Yeah, I think we do intend to have SDL support. Thomas Voss has been talking about that. We, we've discussed it with various third parties that would like to use it, so I, I think we will have it. So yeah, as far as I know, that? yeah, I w was going to add that as, as far as I know, uh, click packages will, won't will be able to, to express dependencies. It's at least uh, the current state of things, so you would have to, to bundle it, but um, <laughs> Things might change, and if you have a, a special use case, bring it up on the uh, Ubuntu App Store developers list. And we can talk about it. So yeah, just to follow up on that as well, um, we've had a lot of feedback from some stakeholders who are interested in Mir that they um, that they they're going to need SDL support. Uh, they're going to need basically full OpenGL, um, and that's something that we can provide as part of Mir. So. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if we do end up actually shipping it as part of the platform. So you won't need to bundle it, but if you do need to bundle it, then it'll work. Um, so yeah, bring your OpenGL games. Um, uh, BA7, worst nick in the world, BA7 r uh, What will be the mail client in use? Also, will it support Exchange? So I assume that you're talking about in use on the phone. Um, we've I can probably take that to a degree, and then maybe Pat wants to follow up. But we've, we're, the, the mail client is not part of the Core Apps project, um, it, so we're not targeting on a, targeting an application ready for 13.10. Um, but we are starting to put some plans in place around a mail client that we will have, uh, hopefully for 14.04, that will be operated as a as a community Core App, and it's going to be based upon another upstream project uh, that we will use as its core. I don't know if there is Exchange support in that upstream. So, yeah, so we, we will have a mail app. Bear in mind that we already ship a Gmail client that ships the Gmail, um, the web, Gmail web front end already in the images. Um, okay, next question is from DS McGuire. Does anybody else think that the Ubuntu Touch tablet inf interface would really, uh, would really suit small screen netbooks? I personally think that Ubuntu Touch could be really usable with the tablet interface. Anyone have any thoughts on that? The only point I had was that it's kind of the beauty of Unity, and I would totally agree. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Unity can really run across any size screen. You know, from a screen that fits the pocket to a screen that fits the house. So. With the, the shell and the SDK doing the dynamic layout based on you know, screen size and form factor, it's quite good. Yeah, that's a good point as well, Pat, in the, in the sense of, um, you know, one of the key focus points that we've had with the SDK is that you can write your application once and it will run across all of these different devices. And those of you who are interested in participating in the, in the app showdown, um, we're also going to be giving some points for people who build their application to, to be conversion across um, phone and tablet as well. So if you're interested in in participating in the showdown, that's a, you know, it's, it's pretty easy to, to build this kind of support into your app. Um, next question um, is from 
Clutch. What computers are primarily used in the Ubuntu offices? System 76, XPS 13 Developer Edition, MacBook Pro. We have a pretty wide swathe of computers that people tend to use. I mean, there is a very dominant pattern of ThinkPads. Um, uh, a lot of people have ThinkPads, but there's quite a few Macs that people use with Ubuntu running on them. A bunch of Dell machines. So. A lot of the UDS machines are System 76. Actually, I'm just reading the thing that we purposely tell people to get as many crazy brands as possible so we can dog food on as much stuff. Yeah. Um, this one's probably for Pat, uh, Simeon314. Any plans to improve the Software Center desktop app? Um, yeah, I'm not sure I know. I, I think not because we're moving more to um, rely on the scope. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. The, the, the Simeon mentioned desktop app, yeah. I don't think there's going to be meant much focus on that moving forward, but the, the dash has been extended and improved to make installing applications much better. Um, yes, Maguire, will there ever be an Ubuntu Touch image for the Nokia N9? My understanding is that it will be able to it should be able to run it as it can also run Android. Daniel, have you seen anyone who's ported it to an N9? No. I checked. But the if you go to I didn't see N9 on there. Yeah. Yeah, you can go to wikiubuntucom slash touch slash devices and you can see a list of uh, the current ports on there. All right. Uh, and then the final question as we, come, as we pull into the final couple of minutes uh, is from Kantai. I use Android currently, and I'm tied into the Google ecosystem. In other words, Gtalk, Gmail, etc. Will Ubuntu Touch allow easy importing of Google contacts, etc., and allow me to easily use the Ubuntu Mail client and IM client that come with Ubuntu Touch? So we already have technically the ability to import Google contact, um, but Pat, maybe you can speak a little bit more about the Google integration. Yeah, there's. Um, I understand that there's. I think we're working with the EDS to, if I have it right, to, uh, to do some integration with the sync uh, sync capability, so that it becomes more automatic. So I think Ken Van Dyne's been doing that work with upstream. So we should see some improvements there. Not in Nibley, but sometime. And I think it will also all integrate with the Ubuntu online accounts. So you just sign into your Google account once in Ubuntu Touch, and that'll be used to get your contacts and your calendar and everything. Yeah. All right. So with that, we're going to um, we'll wrap this up. Thank you to Daniel, George, Michael, Pat, and Thomas uh, for, for joining today. Um, Thank you to all of you for joining up and, uh, and asking your questions and checking in with the updates. And we'll see you next week for another weekly update. So thanks, everyone. Have a nice week. Bye.